We played two times, 50 minutes, the time is not stopped when there's a break. There's a difference to an, to an official league game and we're starting here. And here we go, we're in the game and yeah. uh, Flipper is in ball possession. Uh, we are in the middle and we have a big cluster in the middle here uh, with all <laughs> almost all players uh, around. We only see Bamberg, it looks like it's Bamberg is uh, fighting, fighting for against well. each other uh, for the ball. But I think there's only one Flipper player involved in the middle of this cluster on the surface. And uh, let's see what happens if the ball is free here. The ball comes so free in yeah. the hands of Bamberg. And we go in direction of the Flipper basket. Yes, Already heavy for checking from the Flipper players. And uh, this is a cluster heavy. Here comes one Bamberg player from the close side in the corner. And uh, but already really, really tough for checking by we Flipper. We can say Lukas Stade, uh, Niklas Stade here with the number 12 and the yellow snorkel trying to prepare. Clemens Neumann with the number 5 waiting to receive the pass. He's looking through the basket to see what's happened on the other side of the basket. Now we have a pass from Hannes Hoffmann. He's bl blind pass. This was not so bad done by Hannes Hoffmann. And now we see Niklas Stade here coming from down. Uh, from the down position, but well but defended by Flipper. This is really difficult against a team like uh, uh, Flipper. They are really like uh, uh, Ausgekocht, we say in German. They, yeah, they have a lot of experience. That's really, they're, they're playing really smart. You've seen this was a very risky, but also very hard pass. I, I think the defenders don't expect that Hannes Hoffmann here from this, you can say, one and a half meter distance to pass there through, but it was very well um, received by Clemens Neumüller. He turned around the back, so he was not immediately trying to attack the goal. He made a free spot for Niklas Tada, who followed up. And okay. uh, it was the first good, it was not a real chance to score, but a good positioning uh, chance here, uh, maybe to make a second or for a second or third. We have now a Freiburg from Flipper against Bamberg wegen Würgen. Es ist gegen ein bisschen an Hals an den Flipper-Spieler. Und äh, jetzt versucht Flipper ähm, zurück, äh, versucht äh, in die Hälfte von Bamberg zu kommen und von der Mitte hier reinzugehen. Es wartet auch äh, schon mit 15 auf der offenen Seite und passt in die Mitte yeah. rein. Und äh, sie versuchen von verschiedenen Seiten anzugreifen, den Ball zwischen sich laufen zu lassen. Aber auch hier haben wir ein ausgekochtes Team in der Verteidigung. Bamberg weiß, was läuft. Und äh, wird an die Oberf der Ball wird an die Oberfläche in einem äh, in einem Gerangel hochgebracht. Es ist ein very this is a very very nice semifinal. As both teams are very very well experienced. You know we are now Flipper. They gain uh, a certain knowledge and experience in the Euro League. That also there are a couple of tough really tough matches. We know Bamberg. They are playing in the Champions uh, Cup for four years so far for 12 years in a row. So um, we see here Andy Weisenberger with the ball. Hannes Hoffmann here downstairs. Receiving the pass, passing to Nussi, who is then going through and on the other side, but still here, Rasmus Luther, number 14, is here. Safe in the position, but oh, Andy Weisenberger here, still in the defender position, but so far, so both teams, they know it's two times 15 minutes. There's not a lot invested right now. We have seen Bamberg in Euro games starting <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> but oh, I take over. So trying uh, to make a goal. And uh, but this time, they not uh, made it to get hard at the very beginning. And uh, here we have Bamberg, the one player coming from above. Uh, there is uh, another one playing, uh, waiting uh, on the high level of the goalkeeper from, uh, from uh, Flipper. And uh, we are uh, probably five minutes into the first half and another attack from Bamberg. It was just one player coming uh, from the close side. Now we have uh, two players waiting. But you see, down. this is what I mean. Like the, the, the forechecking of Flipper, of course, they're very, very intense. Goal. They are intense, but Bamberg sometimes they have the chance here to swim yes, at the basket. Of get course, really close. the defenders and the attackers coming down there, but at least these are the situations they want to create. We see here Tor, um, Tor Lunch, who uh, got the ball now very quick and started the counter attack here. Can we switch the camera, please? This Can is we also the other camera. Thank you, yeah. This is what is very important here, but we see Bamberg, look at Stada here. He got the ball, passing through. And now there's a the referee free throw against, against uh, Bamberg. Lukas Stade had been attacked at the head, and we see here uh, Clemens Neumüller and the sore face. Clemens Neumüller with number five, maybe he's waiting for a player, picking up the ball, and then I assume he's going to to the to, to try to steal any position at the basket. Now he's diving down. This is what I predicted, but now he's just to for his position. We see Hannes Hoffmann here together with Clemens Neumüller on the right hand side. He's passing, so we see 
very, very nice here. Jan Hoffmann got the ball. So now here we see Sebastian Horner with the number 13 trying to attack, but on the other side, the Danish team here is defending very, very well, very professional. Defenders. Flip, flippers, <laughs> flippers, also flippers a team amazing, that they're, yeah. never or they're not usually not receiving a lot of goals. I assume that this game will be decided by 1-0. Both, both I teams even are think very, we go very into good defense. penalty. I even it think we go into yeah, penalty shooting. Maybe even that it will be. So the first goal here may decide the match. Because I think uh, Bamberg will put a lot of pressure on the flipper basket, but flipper will not be able to score against Bamberg. No. But uh, with the defense, flipper has. So we will go. I guess we will go into penalty even after half an hour of playing time. So we've played so far five minutes, and we remember all the matches Bamberg has played so far. They were scoring the fi first five minutes. So this is a zero zero so far. Even on the other hand, flipper they scored many many goals. Call from the referee. So um, there are very two strong teams here meeting in the, in the second semi final of the day. The question question is who's going to play the final tomorrow against the Colombia team from Orkner? Free throw against uh, Bamberg. Yeah. And we see here Rasmussen with the ball, passing the ball through. And Jonas Lunch is here in the position with the 21, waiting for the pass. But at the moment, Flipper is just more focused in keeping the ball. We lost to Niklas Taller here in the clinch with, with Jonas Lunch. And then now the forging is very great here. Nussi. Mich Michael Nuss Nusswar here checking the ball, passing to Andy Weisenberger now with number 15. I mean they're very relaxed, the Bamberg players. You see, they yeah. don't yeah, make yeah, the yeah, fast yeah. break. They just break one to bring the ball. And but immediately when they're touching the defender, you see here a lot of players coming down. And you know this is dangerous, very critical situation. If they don't make it to get the ball, this will be a dangerous situation. We have seen that in the match before. Yeah. And yeah. uh, from Sebastian Lange, in the last goal they scored against the. The Turkish team was yesterday, or then in the morning well, against yeah, Akaran. Yes. Akaran, when Sebastian Lange jumped into, he uh, four players tried to get the ball and didn't do it, so couldn't manage it. So he passed the ball down to Lukas Tarder, who was waiting and had a second for him alone with the goalkeeper to score. This is something Flipper really needs to to uh, uh, to uh, concentrate on and to put a focus on. If they attack the Bamberg players with three players. They need to make sure that they're getting the ball, otherwise it will be a very, very risky situation. But so far they do it very well. So we see Hannes Hoffman fighting with Tor, number four here, and there's another call from the referee. So it's against Flipper. Free throw against Flipper here, and we are uh, ha in the half, uh, the first, first half off. of the first half uh, is over. We have a little bit less, a little bit more than seven minutes left. and. Uh, I think uh, uh, Bamberg is in better ball control, but this yeah. is a typical game against uh, Flipper game, against a yeah. uh, uh, very good opponent. Flipper is digging in in their defense, waiting until they have a chance to break free and go uh, with a massive force in a counter-attack. And you see we played here already eight minutes and there was no clear chance so far. So both teams are played here, but not, not one of these teams had a real chance to score. Now there was a free throw for holding cold against Bamberg even if it if we talk about the free throw so we have said uh, probably two or three on both sides so this is very equal so so far no team had a big chance Bamberg a bit more ball possession but uh, Flipper on the other hand a very good defending here you see both teams are in their half so none of the teams is risking anything so they're playing very structured very very well here and of course Bamberg is here very impressive in the four checking part but it's the same for Bamberg. If they go in with a lot of players trying to get the ball and don't do this, it's, it's maybe also a risk situation. But, but here the, 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 the how fast out. they switch from a static yeah. situation into fast movement is amazing. The concentration these guys, both teams, yeah. must be in is just uh, uh, like sun state yeah. Buddhism. And if you see again Tor attacking, uh, it must be Fight Hoffman here with the number 18-7. Hannes Strauber with the number five from Germany supporting here the clutch, uh, the cluster. And a lot of people are involved here. Must be Jonas with the 21 2 from Denmark. Here now, Sebastian. Oh, yeah, he was here in position. The ball were dropped down to him. More or less kicked or, or pushed to him to the Danish players. But you see here, very well defense of both teams. Here, Lukas Tade, who is a defender, is playing very, very offensive, waiting for his replacement, who is right now in position. So you see, there's a lot of risk, more or less, in the water. If Lucas Tato, for example, his position is attacking and the players go through and his replacement is not ready, this is a, a situation Flipper would love to have to get with two players 
at an empty, you can say, empty ground close to the basket. This is really where they bring their power in. But uh, both teams will have analyzed the games of each other Definitely. a lot. They know each other and they know what have they have to prevent yep. to, to interrupt uh, the game of each yep. other. So they, they have a plan what they are doing here and it's not like two teams meeting for the first time. That's true. So uh, both teams have a plan and have a plan B and a plan C probably too. And uh, the plan for uh, Bamberg is just to establish enough pressure on the the flipper basket and to force flipper to be in defense and then nevertheless breaking open the defense and find the, uh, the sweet spot where they can push the ball and there's another attack from uh, the close side ball is free yeah. in the open in the middle of but the you pool. see here for example number 14 Rasmus who is the captain he has a lot of brief he's more or less the brain or the the head of the flipper team so it is his team his strategy his pattern and for example, if you take the comparison between the Colombian team and the Danish, you see here, he's really relaxed, even with his legs, when he's being attacked. He do, he's not worrying when someone is touching his leg. While, for example, Colombia, they, they were kind of kicking, moving right fast, their feet in the goalkeeper in the defender position. Call so from the referee. It's attack really nice to, to the see head. different styles. Free throw against Flipper, and we have yeah. uh, 3 minutes 45 left in, the first in this half. first half. What do you think if you go in uh, penalty shooting? Who is here in favor from your p on your side? Oh, that's super difficult. Uh, I never, I don't remember. I think uh, um, both teams are equal. It's it's very equal in penalty shooting. Yeah. Um, we could see Tor again winning the ball from Denmark, but then he lost it again. Now we see here, Gesa top probably in the fight with the number seven of Denmark. It's not often uh, uh, we see uh, Flipper. Uh, going out of these fights with uh, ball control, like here, uh, th there was a uh, number 28 was attacked by a Bamberg player, and he stripped the ball away out of. Uh but this is also a very critical situation. If you have this fight for the ball, you can see the lines at the ground. So we talk, maybe we talk about the second line. So you have the ball at your second line. You bring a player uh, in your position at your opponent baskets. It's always very a critical situation. If you're losing the ball, of course you will have. One person more behind the ball, with uh, behind your opponent, they're getting a ball position, attacking the goal. So it's always a bit the question: What do I risk? How many people and how long do I put a? P oh, this is a great situation here right now. This was great. Number 17 here with the best chance so far, because there was a there was a Danish people stealing the basket. I don't know how it really works, because I know the Bamberg always leaving the goalkeeper at their own side. Who could he? really caught and, and, and steal the, the dust now. So we have the head referee so far, of course, number 17. So we have a, 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 a big chance with his teammate on the uh, Bamberg basket. He could not manage it because he was immediately uh, attacked, but this is very nice. Time, out, time, for out, here. time so out for Bamberg. Two minutes left now in the first half and we we'll see a timeout from Bamberg. We have the remark here yeah. in the live chat. Uh, they cannot hear me. Can you hear me now? And there's a time oh, penalty. Again, there's a time penalty against Bamberg T. So this is now a really critical situation. The last two minutes of the game, Flipper has over as a power play. The next thing is Flipper now starts in ball position with his free throw. Flipper again has a time panel uh, at a timeout now so they can bring the best six players in the water they can talk about the strategy so we see in blue we see 21 Jonas we will assume to see Rasmussen we assume to see Tor and maybe who will be another player here so we see the number 14 already in the water 21 we see in the water so there are the top six probably coming in here now for Denmark trying here against five players from Bamberg to score immediately I cannot see who is on the penalty Bench, but it looks like Hannes Driver, I assume. Is it? Was it? Maybe. So please give me a quick feedback. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, probably can't hear me because Thomas Kostler is talking. Yep. <laughs> um, so we have a Bummer player on the penalty bench and we so have uh, about two minutes I left it's Hannes and it's a free the throw penalty. against Bamberg. Yep. So it's a bad situation for the end of the second, uh, for the first half. But we see now also on the other side, we see uh, Bamberg with the top players, so there's like Nussi and Seep, Seep in the water. We see uh, Niklas and Lukas Tarder in the starting five, and uh, of course Andy Weisenberger is probably one of the best forwards we have here. And of course, oh dear, Lukas is investing a lot, this was a risk situation, but with his long hands he could manage it now here to 
to get him a cluster with the ball and he even got the ball now Tor could not manage to receive Niklas Tanner here getting the ball fighting his swim through that's great press to Andy Weissenberger now and they're already reaching midfield wow, nice Lucy interception here. here this was an interception from Jonas Lunch very great Jonas Lunch here made the interception very nice passing the ball through but here we have again Lukas Stade and Septe, both the two both national players here. Both go massive down here in the game. Yeah, we see Tor, he lost his cap, I don't know if he was touched or fouled, but he, he's diving down even with just a half of the equipment on his head. There's one minute left in the time penalty so far. But Bombet now again in ball possession, Lukas Stade with the ball here behind the referee, cannot see him. Attacked immediately by two players, here's now Tor again attacking him, but so this is a very, very intensive play here, but Bamberg, they are in the ball possession and they're trying, you see this. They're not going to the surface, they're half staying at the floor. Half a minute left in the first half. And it does very, very nice one. Well typical flipper but this game, game to be... This pass moves are very dangerous here. It's a typical flipper yeah. move to go into the second half uh, with yeah. a lead. So oh, they really throw crazy. everything really in crazy. front uh, of the Bamberg basket. 23 seconds left now, 20 seconds left in the first half, but I think... This is over now, it will be discussed now, but as we see, left. there are two seconds left under the time penalty, what means that Bamberg needs to start with five players in the second half, but of course one player more can jump in the water then, <laughs> immediately after the after the starting signal. So um, we are in the halftime break now. So in this match we are playing two times 50 minutes and we have a five minute halftime break. The we, we have seen a couple of of uh, team attacks from the Bamberg side but none was leading to really 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 100% goal chance so far they were just trying out a bit Bamberg at the end Flipper here was the better team cause they really managed to attack heavily the Bamberg basket they could steal uh, the basket by a player and number 17 it was uh, Philip Robertson had so far the best chance by trying to bring the ball into the basket with the with his own team made on the opponent's basket um, but he was immediately attacked and could not manage it after that Hannes Streiber from Bamberg received a two minutes time penalty we don't know if it was a real uh, uh, penalty for hard playing or it was an exchange mistake but they had a two minutes uh, penalty playing just with five players in the water and uh, I think with the timeout Flipper could bring in the top six in the water and they managed it to, to bring a lot of pressure on the Bamberg basket, but could not score. But uh, as I see, and uh, that's my guess for this game, we will go into uh, through the second half without a goal. We will we will Let's we see. will surf into uh, the the penalty shooting. Thank you for the uh, confirmation from yeah. Ahab nineteen eighty eight. No. Thank you. You can hear me. Uh, we always need feedback in the live what chat, about and we will try uh. to react as much as we can to what you post in the live chat. So if you have questions, us from where are you yeah. watching we have 470 people watching in the live stream and please give us feedback where are you watching from uh, what time it is what are you doing it's a uh, saturday here in germany it's uh, in berlin it's very dark outside and uh, we are getting close to the end of the day last game uh, will be at 9 30 today wir fassen das spiel mal ganz kurz auf deutsch zusammen für die deutschen zuschauer wir spielen ja bamberg äh, gegen den dänischen vertreter flipper hier im halbfinale es geht darum wer gegen morgen gegen das Team aus Kolumbien im Finale spielt hier um den Champions Cup. Ähm, die Bamberger haben ja eigentlich recht gut in das, in das Spiel gestartet, hatten viel Ballbesitz, haben aber keine, noch keine zwingenden wirklichen Torchancen hinbekommen, so ein bisschen am Tor sich ausprobiert beim Gegner, immer mal wieder so Angriffe gemacht werden. Eine Situation, als äh, Hannes Hoffmann einen schönen Pass an Clemens Neumüller gebracht hatte, der an der offenen Seite lag, der sich direkt mit dem Rücken zum Untertorverteidiger abgewandelt hatte. Ähm, Niklas Tanner wollte von unten mit reinkommen. Das war so eine nennenswerte Situation. Auf der anderen Seite hatten wir dann aber Flipper, die wirklich ganz zum Schluss nochmal richtig massiv kamen. Urplötzlich lag ein äh, Flipper-Spieler auf dem Bamberger Korb, was eine sehr, sehr gefährliche Situation war. Aber das ist so ja. typisch, das für so ein Wunderbar. Spiel. Genau gegen Ende von der, von der ersten ja. Halbzeit nochmal reinzugehen und alles reinzuschmeißen und den, den Korb zu klauen. Ich weiß aber aus ihrer Quelle, dass Bamberg immer einen Spieler hinten an der Wand hat, an Torwart. Und es ist daher sehr verwunderlich, wie kann es sein, dass der gegnerische Spieler vorher drauf liegt. Die Situation war sehr brenzlig. Es war sehr, sehr viel Hektik herum. Es gab eine Zeitstrafe gegen Hannes Treiber, der hier bei Bamberg heute äh, Sturm spielt. Und äh, somit hat wirklich ähm, Flipper wirklich zwei Minuten, die letzten zwei Minuten der ersten Hälfte, die Überzahlsituation mit 6 gegen 5 und hat natürlich die Top 6 ins Wasser gebracht nach einer Auszeit und hat natürlich massiv dann das Bamberger Tor bearbeitet. 
Bamberg hier mit Lukas Tada, Andi Weißenberger, ähm, Niklas Tada, äh, Sebastian Lange und äh, Nussi im Wasser hatte hier mit quasi ihren auf der Top 5 auf der anderen Seite sehr, sehr gut dagegen gehalten und hat das natürlich dann auch über die Zeit gerettet. So, uh, Thorsten, can Thorsten. you in the next uh, uh, Underwater Rugby Academy, can you give us a, a little <laughs> workshop, a little <laughs> workshop <laughs> on how to speak without taking a breath for five minutes? You need to, it's like, it's like with, uh, when you have a music But instrument, you need you to breathe and to be careful. at the same time. You have no voice left and we still have the finals, so you need to rest, don't otherwise it's going worry. to be like a, you know, torture for you being able to watch and not to talk. <laughs> So yeah, you can you can probably feel our excitement here. It's really if you spend the, the time in the atmosphere around the pool and uh, see all these players coming in and out, see them uh, winning and losing, and you're really into the, the feeling here, into the rhythm of the Champions Cup. And it's three days really crazy on the water rugby, every day from uh, early in the morning until late in the night, and you're immersed in the in the in the emotions around here. It's just a, a crazy feeling, and this is why we we go uh, ballistic like this okay. when we watch a game like here, Bama against Flipper, because these are highlights of the year. So, yeah, let's jump back maybe to the to the yeah. Of course, this is very nice. So we have, as you see in the time penalty, obviously, Bamberg, Hannes Schreiber still on the penalty bench. So the the swimming. Um, Bamberg needs to start with five players in the water, but after two seconds, and a new player can jump in. But this is a critical situation at the beginning, because if if uh, Flipper now has a chance to come hard at the very beginning, so time penalty is over. Bamberg again with six players in the water, what was well done. And uh, let's see what's going on in the second half. We have a 0-0, zero zero, no goal in the first half. We have seen a time penalty on the side of Bamberg, what was wondering because we have yesterday also seen two time penalties yes Bamberg. against Bamberg that's I'm very uh, I've never surprising. Seen it before. Yes. Very surprising yes but I think that's uh, part of the, the the change I see in the Bamberg gameplay they sp they play more physical yeah. they play more uh, in the offensive so uh, I give over to uh, uh, Davrel Tien here in this game so he has a little bit of the action and a little bit of the <laughs> adrenaline Davrel so here you go see here Rasmussen waiting for the ball but it was It was won by Bamberg, who now passed the ball through to Niklas Tada with the yellow snorkel here. We can see Andy Weisenberger now getting the ball with the long hair, passing back to Niklas Tada. So this is quite, quite amazing to see how long these players here of both teams are staying underwater. Hannes Hoffmann here trying to make a block, supported Clemens Neumiller. He passed back to Andy Weisenberger, who comes now massive, but Rasmussen here was clearing the situation immediately. Clemens Neumiller again with the ball here, coming up to the surface. But it's very well defended here by both teams. So Flipper, they're doing a very well job. It seems like it's impossible here to score against them. They're always, as soon as the ball is coming close to the basket, all the players are immediately attacking the ball, and uh, often they get it then. So what do you see in, uh, so far? What do you think who's going to win, Debra? Um I think Bamberg is a slight favorite. Yeah. But I think the Flipper strategy is to wait, be patient. And then to they did really it in the first hard. half, and have you seen this, this, this great chance they had in the end of the first half? But this was something coming out of nothing, what is very, very nice to see here. Lukas Tara passing, I, I assume that this is one of the game plays he tried to pull up the goalkeeper. Yeah, yes, Lukas Tara with the chance. This was a game star we have seen a couple of times. This is a, like, a, like a partnership, you know, Sebastian, he's attacking the goalkeeper, trying to lift him up, passing down to Lukas Tara, who tries to score, so <laughs> they've trained this a lot, because it's often working very, very well. But as you see here, Flipper, they're doing a very great job. You know, they're always massive. There's, there's massive players here they're close at the basket. There's, it doesn't look, if you see the basket here, there's no space. Not even a fly can, uh, or something, a fly can flew through here. So how should, how should you bring I a ball the, in? The, the, uh, the key thing is that the backs on Flipper, yeah. they make sure that they have their fins up. Yeah. You cannot just swim through them. They don't leave that empty space there. So all of these clubs at the top level, they're looking for some space. Let yeah. me get by your yeah. goal. And they know that they have to deny this. But to be honest, this was the really first great uh, score situation we have seen here with a lot of pressure uh, uh, invited and started by Hannes Hoffman together with Clemens Neumiller passed the ball to Andy, uh, Andy Weissenberger. So this was really the, the first great chance after Sebastian passed the ball through to Lukas Tade. So Flipper needs now to take, really to be um, a war about that Bamberg is getting here more and more aggressive 
So Flipper really needs to get also in ball possession here, not to lose here too much. And this was also a great, great trick. Awesome! Lucas Stoddard did it. This was a great move. Have you seen that? He had the ball, attacked the defender. He made the trick move by, by faking a pass, and he came back. And from the open side with the ball in the right hand, saved by the wall. What was it? Claude, he attacked Claude immediately. Larson on the bottom, who's the, the back? I, I'm not, I was not really sure who was uh, the, the goalkeeper, but, but this was the thing was he didn't was get his foot up. We have seen who's, who's on the basket. We're 28 here now in the defending position, as I assume it was. But we tried to find out more about the players he'd been involved. But more or less it was a single attack done alone by Lucas Donner with a fake pass. He didn't get his foot up. Yeah. Yeah. But this was this was very very nice. Well done here. So there's a one zero eins null Führung für Bamberg nach einem Trickspielzug quasi von Lukas Tanner, der erst den Angriff antäuschte und dann das Ding selbst verwandelte. Super gemacht. Den Untertorwart angegriffen mit dem Ball quasi der Ballführende hat einen Pass unter dem Arsch angetäuscht. Der Tor hat sich der Verteidiger kurz weggedreht. <lacht> Diese Sekunde hat Lukas Tanner ausgenutzt hier der Trainer um über die Wandseite, die offene Wandseite hier, die 1-0-Führung zu erzielen. Flipper is now, of course, under pressure. They need to score. Here we see Rasmussen here, Mikko Rasmussen now, but he lost the ball. Niklas Tadde intercepted the ball, now got it, passed it through to Hannes Hoffmann. Here the captain. He's uh, been immediately attacked. Now we see Tor who, who won the ball now, but attacking immediately Sebastian from, from above. Sebastian got the ball quite easy. Oh, and passing it down. Here we see Lukas Tara again. No, it's a uh, fight Hoffman. And uh, yeah, Andy Weisenberger here now fighting with three or two flipper players. Flipper now needs to bring in something. And do you think they have they have the chance here to equalize? Yeah, they do. But it's, uh, it's at least they have ten minutes left. Was a lot of time now. Yeah. So we remember in the first first day yesterday we played two times ten minutes. So it's entire half of yesterday. The chance to score here, of course. So there's enough time for Flipper. Well, I would say what Flipper has in the situation is they have a l maybe a little more speed. Three, they have two or three players who are very fast swimmers. So if they have an opportunity to go from uh, out of the first or second lane over to uh, the other side, <coughs> they can happen very quickly. Because he has a free throw now for Bamberg. They got a bit pressure from the Flipper team, so this was also the first really recognizable. Uh, attack from flipper time here out. <laughs> and there's a timeout so there's a timeout of who, who was taking the time can we see that i would guess that it's flipper that would have chosen to take a timeout at yeah, this point but it's i would guess i guess but this free throw is against flipper but i see here a guy on a is, is there someone on the t on the penalty bench no they don't have a time penalty have they because i see someone there at the corner no it's just sitting at the no, well, no, there's someone on the time penalty bench, so I think well, there's a power play. Is it the referee behind? Box. No, there's oh, yeah, someone on the, the penalty right box. Side. So it's a power play in, in <coughs> favor of Bomber. Bomber. So and that's all the more reason yeah. for... And this is maybe the reason for the time of yeah. Bomber is taking, bringing in here the top six. So we have seen, we have seen the same situation, um, how do you say, vice versa on the uh, flipper side. So flipper had the chance here after a timeout to come in two minutes power play with the top six. Now it is your decide. Bambik now has the chance after timeout to come in with the top six here uh, to extend the lead to 2-0. Do you think that Bambik is going to score here in the two minutes? I, d I don't think that uh, scoring is uh, essential for Bamberg at this point to put pressure on Flipper. I think they're, they're trying really to uh, to score here immediately because the issue is that uh, this is a very good opportunity for them now, even for the self-confidence here. But even they won't, sure won't want to risk the ball lightly I don't think <coughs> oh but they, they yep they hold on mm -hmm. so the first see what sort of moves the they make towards the goal are now. over now so we see here Niklas uh, Lukas Tare together with Sebastian Lange so and he passing back to Hannes Hoffmann with the number two here Flipper is so far doing a very good job would you, would you call this a real attempt to score? No, no not really. I think so far they're just trying out. They're just bringing the but ball they have, a, they have a player down by the bottom yeah, now. Sebastian Lange again, yeah, the goalkeeper good. here. And this is what they're probably... Oh, oh there's a pass. pass. There's a, and there's attack. 
Oh, this was, n this was maybe a half of a chance. So he just had to, he received the ball, but the defender immediately got the, or could touch the ball and grab the ball. So now there's a cluster at the surface. There's just 45 seconds left here for the penalty time. We see Johannes Hoffmann, but the position was stealing immediately by the defender. Rasmussen <laughs> with the number 14 now. Psychologically, if Flipper is thinking about <laughs> getting through this power play, and then right after the power play, that's an opportunity left. for Bamberg to apply real pressure. But you see now here 20 seconds, a couple of uh, Bamberg players changing, so maybe they're waiting now here, bringing the players in. 10 seconds left. It was a very it was a good power play, but not a very uh, but very not a successful one. So there was not a real proper chance now so far. But let's see, the time penalty is not over. Now it's over. So Flipper again with six players in the water. Time penalty is over. Flipper did here very well, job. It was not very risky here so far. Just played with one player less. But now they need to. I, I'm not sure how much power it took I them. I don't think how much they energy. I don't think they wanted to to risk the ball. They yeah. wanted to, they wanted to hold on. And actually, they were closer to losing the ball yeah. as a result of being careful. Yeah. You, you That's true. You I know agree, what I mean. I they were yeah. a little bit hesitant, and that. Yeah. But they held on. Here's Hannes Schreiber again, who tries yeah. to attack, but Johannes Lunch immediately <laughs> got the ball. Locked up. Now from a... Six minutes left here, so Flipper needs to score if they want to make it to the final. So far, Bamberg has a 1-0 lead. <coughs> With this result, Bamberg is so far in the final, playing against the Orca team from Colombia tomorrow. And I think that the Orcas has to be favored in the final. The way they played, they blew Rikamaki out of the water. Yeah. And, uh, Who, who's going to? Uh, Orcas blew Rikamaki out of the water. Yeah, and yeah. I think in the final, this was awesome, it, yeah. it doesn't matter who goes to the final, Orcas is going to win. You think really Orcas is yeah. going to win? Yeah. yeah. Well, so Devry already decided think. to I see I as a I favorite. Don't, yeah, I don't I know, so, you know. Maybe, yeah. I can't see the future, yeah. but I can guess. <coughs> but you can guess. But now we see here again a free throw from uh, Flipper here now. And of course, they now need to put more. Yeah. Now we see 28 here being attacked by three players. It is Davidson Bosrian who is now attacked by three players, but he still managed to hold and keep the ball now. Here we see Tor now with the ball trying, coming from up from uh, the upper position, but he lost the ball. Andy Weisenberger here, but Rasmussen intercepted, got it back, passed to his teammate. There's a little tunnel there, but yeah. it's filled with people. There's so yeah. many very strong and very um, skilled players here in the water. It's great to see that one one guy stealing the ball from the other. It looks so easy, but this is very top level underwater rugby here, what we can see here. So Bamberg now here in the defense, a bit under pressure here so far. Flipper could not bring the ball very, very close and dangerous uh, to um, at the Bamberg score, but but they still have four minutes left, four minutes and 17 seconds. We see here now and again the number 17 in position, Philip Lauritsen, who's waiting to receiving the ball, and again we see the Flipper team with their with their taped legs, which is a signal that is the goalkeeper, and, and again as in the games before, the goalkeepers here are having the task to make to steal the pos any position to get in position at the basket. Um, at the opening baskets here, like it is done by 71. <coughs> Bamberg's doing a good job of pushing Flipper back. That's good, that's very true, that's true. So there's just 3.45, uh, 3 minutes and 45 seconds left now. And of course, Bamberg is more and more focusing and, and, and keeping the score, so not receiving any goal here. And of course, Flipper's putting more and more effort in scoring in this match. because. With they need a goal if they want to make it to the um, <coughs> penalty shooting or even do it. <coughs> <coughs> With this result, Bamberg would be in the final. No, I don't. <coughs> I don't think. Um, I don't. I don't see how Flipper is going to change this very easily. They're not. They're not controlling the ball 50 percent of the time. <coughs> yeah. So here we have seen the number 25 try to, to swim through. It was Sigurd Grief, Didison, but unfortunately he lost the ball. <coughs> and here number one tries to forecheck here, but Bamberg are doing a very nice job in keeping the ball in the overall. Now there's a quick one. 
this is great. Now we can see here number 28, it was Bastian Davidson again here making, starting the fast break, passing to Rasmussen. We see here number 17 again, Philip Rolson, the goalkeeper, trying to steal no. any position. And now we assume he's now in the Mela position. And now we're expecting him to receiving the ball, but Bamberg got it. Here we see <coughs> it Bamberg getting the ball. It was a good but... Uh it was a good one. You've seen, uh, this was again a game, certain gameplay flippers usually doing, like with the goalkeeper coming from the open side, trying to steal a any position at the, at the basket, at the defender position. And now we see here Clemens Neumüller, who for is forcing immediately three players to dive down. Did you play juniors with Clemens? With Clemens Neumüller? No, he was one of my junior players in uh, 2011 and 12, I guess, or in, and even 2010. So he played uh, for the junior national team two or three years and uh, even got the European champion, as I remember. He's very, he's very strong. He's uh, very strong. He's yeah. a former fin swimmer. You see this, yeah. even in his, in his fast, he's very fast and very skilled. And he's playing for Bamberg now for a couple of years now. What is, what was very good for his develop, for his developing personal development. And here again, so it's one and a half, 90 seconds left so far. So now Flipper needs to put a lot. But here we see, again, Fight Hoffman who got the ball now here. <coughs> oh, Flipper, he's here now the ball position. Last, last chance. Number one, Henry Cast now here with the ball. He's trying to give the ball through, <coughs> but he's swimming uh, very much with the ball, and he's leaving the basket. He should have been there. But he he kept he kept <coughs> away from uh, yeah. getting tied up, and that was good because they can't afford they Flipper can't afford a single yeah, but, but uh, tries scrum to bring on the, the ball, surface. Bringing the ball close to the basket and having a good position, and then they bring the ball back to the surface. Yeah. And this makes it easy for Bumberg to to attack and to intercept the passes. So um, this is maybe the, the main difference bes between both teams. Bamberg always try to keep the ball down at the floor, close to the basket, around. So you can say in a three meter circle around the basket, this is where they want to have the ball at the opponent side. Let me see here, they're passing a bit far away from the basket, but not too far away so that the defenders and the goalkeepers, they really need to proper take the position. And here it's 30 seconds left. Bamberg just playing with the ball. Hannes Driver here being attacked by three flipper players. But he has to just drop the ball now. Here we see Geza Todd with the ball, defeating, and it's it's almost over. 15 seconds left. Maybe there's a last chance now with the pass. Rasmussen got the ball. He started to counter attack, passing the ball through. Now we have a three against two against three position. But there is another one. The ball got through, but Lukas Tada here intercepted. The coach Lukas Tada and now Andy Weisenberger supporting. The time is over. Time is over. Bamberg made it to the final. Bamberg here is winning 1-0 against the Danish champion from Plipper playing in the Champions Cup final. Again, they not played last year. Last year, Flipper played the final. Uh, this year, it's Bamberg against Orcas. We're going to see tomorrow. And tomorrow, we're going to see then Rixu against the Flipper. Yeah. <coughs> I've seen that technique from Flipper before that Rasmussen swims. He meets somebody in the middle of the pool. He gets tied up very short time. He stays down, makes a pass, goes around, expecting to get another pass, but Bamberg was ready for that. Then they but this was, was a very nice match. Pass was coming. We have seen, just um das Spiel mal kurz zusammenzufassen, wir hatten jetzt also in der ersten Hälfte eine eher zögerlich spielende Bamberger Mannschaft gesehen, die ein bisschen was ausprobiert hat, dann plötzlich eine gute Chance von, von Flipper, die dann zu einer Zeitstrafe bei Bamberg geführt hatte. Plötzlich war Flipper richtig stark im Spiel, ähm, in der zweiten Hälfte dann aber Bamberg ähm, kontrolliert, deutlich kontrollierter im Wasser spielte und dann eine Einzelaktion eigentlich von Lukas Tada, der wirklich eine Traumaktion macht, den Ball bekommt, durch eine Fake-Armbewegung Fake quasi den Untertorwart so ein bisschen aussteigen lässt, der guckt nach rechts, obwohl er der Ball gar nicht gepasst wurde, dadurch Lukas Tada eine Sekunde Zeit über die Wandseite, also geschlossen offene Seite mit dem Ball an der Wandseite, von unten gegen den Tor zu drücken, hier das Ding reinzumachen, Unfassbar tolle Aktion, sehr professionell. Flipper hat natürlich versucht, hier nochmal was zu machen. Bamberg dann aber sehr massiv in der Verteidigung. Äh, Flipper sogar noch mal in Unterzahl gewesen durch eine Zeitstrafe. Hier Bamberg mit dem Top 6 im Wasser. Bisschen was probiert, aber nicht zu viel. Ähm, war eher so ein bisschen auf Ballbesitz bedacht. Und ähm, summa summarum, hier Bamberg gewinnt 1-0 gegen Flipper. Steht morgen im Finale des Champions Cups und spielt dann gegen den kolumbianischen Meister Orca. Orcas und äh, ja, kann sich vielleicht auch seinen Traum erfüllen, das erste Mal in zwölf Jahren, nach zwölf Jahren deutscher Meisterschaft, endlich einmal auch den Champions Cup zu gewinnen. Da würden sich natürlich auch die deutschen Fans und Zuschauer darüber freuen, weil wir natürlich seit zwölf Jahren 
und der Bamberger History wirklich auf diesen Erfolg auch warten. Jetzt gebe ich den, den Kopfhörer so weiter an, an äh, Jörg, der hier übernimmt und uns beim Damenspiel kommentieren hilft. The final is decided now. It will be between. Uh, yes. And now we have a semi-final match. Yes. On the women's side. Yes. Yeah. Semi-final that uh, will be Duisburg. Uh, And I will take leave of you, Tom Stink. Against Denmark. So we are F at Duisburg. You're watching the Champions Cup, uh, the semi-final. Uh, first semi-final of the women teams with in blue uh, FS Duisburg against Amma of the Danish team in white uh, this will be the first semi-final and uh, we hope of an exciting game for sure I believe that will be a tough game especially for the Danish team because the Danish team uh, come into the final with just seven, seven players, players. Yes. and that uh, the performance we could <coughs> see until now was amazing but it's a question that's on the second game today what will be the the result uh, yeah the game time is long enough so you have that's two all times 15 minutes uh, takes a toll on your stamina you have basically one more half time compared to the entire games that have been in the group phase right now so we'll see if Amarga can uh, keep their game plan going if they can keep a possession game and basically uh, try to score most likely is try to score as quickly as possible and then keep the ball in possession as long as they can so they can uh that would uh, be the ideal case for the yeah. Danish team uh, of course uh, the Duisburg team I also see what happened see the, the ladies uh, it's now uh, a game which uh, will be physical that means uh, uh, it will be decided with a better trained condition uh, better ball possession more speed underwater yeah uh, in the games before we saw a very concentrated very uh, open-minded uh, team of Denmark the question is now if they really can continue this uh, in the semi-final. There's of course uh, more pressure on the, on the team because uh, the games before there was uh, somehow in shorter game time uh, yeah. better position if you are smart enough. But twice 50 minutes uh, it's quite quite tough so we will see what will be the outcome so the game should start in two minutes so let's see what's going on so i will check my glasses to read <laughs> <laughs> what is in the chat and that so i'm incognitating as lorena bianchi right now so <laughs> Yeah, really interesting. I think the game plan of Amager is very clear. Uh, try to get possession of the ball, uh, try to keep it in their own ranks and uh, score as quickly as possible if they get the opportunity to do so. Um, of course, Duisburg, uh, same game plan in general, but they have the advantage of having a full exchange bench. Um, so we'll see how the Danish uh, stamina can keep up with the German game plan. Um, Ideally for the Germans, they can wear the Danish team out and at some point they will get the opportunity to score with um, fewer uh, Danish players underwater because, well, um, their stamina is uh, lacking at some point. Um, yeah. I think it could be an exciting game. Uh, as you said, quite possibly a physical game because uh, this group will do everything to wear them out because um, the time of the game is definitely to their advantage. Um, yeah, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I know I talked uh, before the game with some of the Danish players. They're, of course, uh, excited to be in the same uh, in, the, in the half final. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the day today was quite exhausting. So, but uh, until now they played a very smart game, a very uh, concentrated game, 
uh, good ball possessions uh, and uh, quite impressive uh, with the status. Mm -hmm. So I hope it will be an exciting game. So yes. basically, my heart is uh, <laughs> your heart is with uh, the German ladies. No, basically, but I'm I'm for an I'm exciting game in general. I'm 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 looking forward for exciting game. So I'll, I trained uh, last year in the training camp with the Danish girls, and uh, on one heart I'm on, on one part of my heart I'm a Duisburg guy, but on the other heart uh, I saw exciting game from uh, for the uh, Danish team from Amma uh, so far. So. I'm looking forward for an exciting game. I'm afraid that uh, for the Duisburg ladies, if they are not able to score in the beginning or control the game, the risk is that they get nervous. And nervous team is always dangerous. But see what's coming up. Um, I've seen a question from, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly, Ada Efrain. Um, usually it's correct.